If you want to have success selling to restaurants, selling anything to restaurants, you need to have a really good handle on what it is they want. Coming up next. I think one of the most important things to being successful in a sales role is the mindset to understand that you've got to have a selfless, generous mindset. You must continually be bringing value to the business relationship. Success in selling isn't about persuasion or about product knowledge. It's really about serving the client's needs. If you do that well, you're going to sell more stuff than you ever thought possible. One of my favorite sayings about sales is, you can get anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And that's what this video is about. I'm going to go through three things that every restaurant wants, but I'm going to go further than that. I'm also going to tell you how to give them those things. So the first thing that every restaurant wants is to increase revenue. The restaurant business is operates on very thin margins and they live and die by their revenue. If they don't have enough revenue, they can't pay their bills, can't keep the door open, and it's just it's it's a job one of any small business, but especially restaurants, they need to increase revenue. So if you're a salesperson and you're coming into the restaurant to sell them something, this needs to be at the forefront of your mind. The first thing out of your mouth needs to be, I can help you increase your revenue. Now let me give you three ways that you might do this as a seller, three practical ways. And really this is, uh, helps you understand how a, how a restaurant makes money, how they generate revenue. One is foot traffic. Is there anything you can do to bring more people into the restaurant? Uh, special promotions, special features, new product introductions, tastings, events, uh, leveraging your social media presence. When you talk about bringing more foot traffic into the restaurant, you've got their full attention. So this is really critical that you think about this first, long before you ever reach into your sample bag or start talking about your products. The conversation that you have in the, you know, front end load the conversation by talking about how you can help increase revenue by growing foot traffic. Another way to increase revenue is something called incidents. So restaurants uh, measure incidents very closely because it helps them see how they're doing. And here's what incidence is. So for every 100 people that come in the restaurant, how many of them order dessert? For every 100 people who come in the restaurant, how many order both a cocktail before dinner and wine during dinner? The, this level of incidence is tracked very closely. So how can you help a restaurant increase incidence? Well, there's a couple of ways. One thing is to bring in products that, that are gonna excite their guests. Um, people are gonna, a lot of times people will go to a restaurant, let's take the, the, the wine category, or actually even better, let's talk about whiskey, because I love whiskey. If I go into a restaurant and I look at the whiskey list and I yawn, I'm probably not gonna waste money. And then I look at the prices and I'm like, you know, I don't mind paying eight or $12 for a glass, a good, a glass of good whiskey, but I, these whiskeys aren't anything special for me. So the, if you don't have a great whiskey list, the incidence of selling whiskey in that restaurant is going to be quite low. So one of the ways you can help them improve incidence is to educate them about what's working, you know, what, what's working in the whiskey category, what's available, what's new, and it doesn't have to necessarily be your product. So you step outside of your own needs and you help the restaurant improve incidence by strengthening the category uh, that that you're you know talking about at that at that moment. Uh, same thing goes for other products you might sell a restaurant. The best way to increase incidence is to have a better assortment, to look closely at the pricing, to make sure the pricing is, is uh, you know, competitive with the people around uh, their particular area. You could do a pricing survey of all their competitors. You could gather, what if you gathered the whiskey list of 10 or 12 restaurants within, you know, one and a half, two mile radius of the restaurant and you brought that in and you showed them. They, they, you know, they would love to have that information, but they don't have time to do it. So, so that's one. Uh, way to help a second way to help grow revenue is by improving incidents. The third way to help them grow revenue is to improve their check average. So check average is, you know, how much is each person spending on average? It's a it's on a per person basis. So if you have a party of four, and the check comes to a hundred dollars, the check average is twenty five dollars per person. 
Now, how do you increase check average? And how, more importantly, as a seller, can you help them increase check average? Well, a lot of the same things that increase incidence also increase check average, but with a few different nuances. You've got to have compelling offerings. So people are not going to order a, a cocktail, an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, and something else to drink with their meal. They're not going to order all those things. And by the way, that's how you build the check average is getting them to order more things. Uh, you've got to have some compelling reasons to do that. So if it's legal in your category to do some kind of a bundling or a special or an early bird thing or just having uh, more visuals at the table, simple things like putting wine glasses on the table, uh, giving other cues that you're a wine-focused restaurant, you, sellers can help with that. You can bring in large format dummy bottles. You can uh, just help educate your client about how to increase check average. And a lot of another way to increase check average is to train their servers, offer to train their servers. And, and there's nothing more annoying than a server coming to the table trying to upsell you. You know why they always recommend the special? Because it's the most expensive thing on the menu. That's kind of annoying. So there is an art to improving the check average. It's, it's subtle. It's focused on the diner themselves, not, not what the restaurant needs. But so you, as a seller, no matter what you're selling, you could do a training for the staff showing them how to increase check average in a really professional, very classy way. So increasing revenue, that's the number one thing you can do. That's the number one thing that every restaurant wants, and I've given you three ways to do it. So the second thing restaurants want, and the, something that you can do to help them get it, is to control costs. Now, a lot of people think that you need to be constantly lowering the costs, and there's nothing wrong with that. Every restaurant will welcome a way to lower costs. But uh, there are plenty of restaurants that take the cheap route for everything, and it shows up in the quality of the food and the service and the decor, and they, they don't last very long. There's a reason there's an 85% failure rate among restaurants. So don't think of it in terms of always having to lower the cost. Think of it in terms of having to control the costs. You know, once a restaurant decides that what it costs them to put together a certain dish, and then they print it on the menu what they're going to charge for that dish, any variance in the cost is going to hurt them. So it's really more about controlling costs than it is lowering the cost. So I have four ways that you can help as a seller. You can help a restaurant control their cost. One is reduce inventory. Uh, a lot of cash is tied up in inventory, food, uh, beverages, uh, you know, equipment, supplies, uh, cash flow is so important to a restaurant. It's, it's really critical. And so they don't need to have too much in, uh, cash tied up in inventory. Now, one of the ways you as a seller can help reduce inventory is in their assortment. You know, help them go through and analyze what's selling and what's not. Uh, help them identify areas where they could uh, increase their inventory turns. Don't carry, maybe they don't need to carry you know, so many of the same type of product, especially if it's not selling. So from the first day you start talking to them about this, you need to ask them, you know, how much money, let's say you're selling wine, uh, how much money do you have in inventory right now in wine? How often do you turn that? Would you like some help understanding how to lower the amount of cash that's tied up in your wine inventory and at the same time increase the turns of your inventory? Boy, now you've really got their attention. And by the way, we haven't even started talking about your products yet because our focus is on how to help the restaurant. And in this case, we're trying to help them control costs. And one of the best ways to do that is reduce inventory. The second way to help control costs is to increase efficiency. You know, uh, you can reduce inventory uh, by being more efficient in your ordering process. You know, you can... You don't have to carry as much inventory. Uh, maybe they should go from ordering once a week to ordering twice a week so that they could uh, not have to carry so much uh, product uh, in-house. Another thing is e efficiency can be a barrier to sales. If it's too difficult for the servers to access the items that they're trying to sell in the dining room, that can really be a problem. So. Uh, Anything you can do to make it easier and faster for servers to get what they need to service their customers um, will work. So having you know pre-opening wine uh, bottles, but only just so much, uh, you know, making things faster uh, in the location of the bar 
uh, for people. These are the types of things that you can do to increase efficiency. I, I, I'm tempted to kind of go into a long rabbit trail about how to increase efficiency for restaurants. For now, let me just say that that is one of the ways you can help control costs, and you're going to have to you know, do some research about how you might help them do that. At least start that conversation with them and say, hey, I'm willing to help you increase efficiencies in your restaurant. The third way to control costs is to control waste. You know, you bring in something and uh, you have to pay for the whole thing. And if you don't sell it all, it's going to get thrown out. And so this waste control is really important. And you can help with that as well. Uh, I, I, I'm sticking with the wine category here because it's, there's so many great examples. But, you know, using wine preservation systems and there's some very affordable uh, wine uh, uh, preservation systems that you can, you can employ and to help a restaurant out. But also there's some strategies about how to do it. So let's say you're pouring uh, 10 different wines by the glass in this restaurant, and two of those wines are quite expensive, and it's gonna really hurt to have leftover wine at the end of the night that may not make it for the next shift. And so you need to train the staff to communicate across the, the dining room, hey, we've got two glasses left of this expensive Cabernet. We really need to sell them. We've got one and an hour and a half to sell these last too. And then after that, so if it's near the end of the night, don't open a new bottle of that expensive Cabernet. Just 86 it or just, you know, steer them somewhere else. But you, you as a seller of wine or spirits or anything else, you can help the restaurant uh, learn how to control waste. And there's lots of ideas around this. Uh, there's something called day dots, which allow, allow you to keep track of everything and when it came into the store and and when it was sold. And so there's versions of this day dot concept that can be applied to a lot of different categories. Uh, anyway, the fourth thing that you can do to help control costs is to reduce or stabilize the price. This is something that's completely within your control as a seller. If you agree to sell a product to a restaurant at a certain price, job one for you is to make sure that it, it actually gets delivered at that price. You should follow up, look at the invoice, if it's possible for you to look at the invoice on your end, you should do that to make sure that they're getting it at the price that they said they would. Uh, sometimes with wine, for example, if they order less than a case, they're going to get hit with a bottle charge or a broken case charge. And so that is really destructive to their cost control. So you can coach them on how important it is to order you know, a case at a time. And you can also... Um, reassure them that you're going to be watching out for the price. So stabilizing the price, making sure there's no fluctuation, this is a great way for you as the seller can help the restaurant control costs. So the third thing that every restaurant wants, and they want it very badly, and that is to improve guest satisfaction. When people go out to a restaurant and they love the experience, they're going to come back, they're going to tell their friends. This is really uh, a difference maker for a restaurant whether they're going to make it long term or not and you as a seller to the restaurant can help in fact this is one of the best ways that you can help so let's talk about how to do this how to help a restaurant improve guest satisfaction one of the first things is to is to bring new products new and interesting things uh, a part of the way restaurants uh, satisfy their guests is to surprise and delight them with new things, interesting things. It's very easy to get excited about that. So you should be bringing new products, new ideas, uh, new varietals, new uh, expressions of your whiskey, new inno and innovative things. This is just great. New products are kind of the lifeblood of sales. Uh, another way to help your restaurant customer improve their guest satisfaction is paying very close attention to the quality and value ratio. You know, bringing high quality products at the lowest possible price is a great way to improve guest satisfaction. So the opposite of this is also true. Don't be bringing restaurant stuff that you need to dump or to sell or to get rid of. This is not helping improve guest satisfaction at all. It might help you relieve you of your inventory, but you're not helping the restaurant. So always have an eye on that quality value relationship. Always be ready to talk about that instead of just the attributes of your product, which is really not very useful. Um, if you have a product that is a, a, an especially good price for, for, for any particular reason, that's going to be something the restaurants to be interested in. In other words, it's normally this price, but we are having it at this price. Uh, that That's definitely going to push uh, the topic to the top of the list, top of the conversation list about uh, whether or not to buy your product. 
Uh, and there are certain cases where brand recognition can help a lot. People pay attention, customers, restaurant customers pay attention <clears throat> to certain brands. This is especially true in the beverage category. And one of the ways brand recognition can help restaurants improve guest satisfaction is on all the brands that are well recognized, make sure those are priced as aggressively as possible. This gives customers uh, some assurance that you're pricing everything fairly. They look at a brand that they know, they think about how much they've paid for it in the wine shop or the grocery store, and they see that you're charging a very fair price. It gives them confidence to explore other parts of the menu on the brands that they don't recognize. So there's a way to use brand recognition to help guests feel comfortable about exploring the menu. Another thing, an obvious thing about brand recognition is there are certain categories where the brand is king, where it's very important that they recognize brand. People are more likely to order something if they recognize the brand. This helps incidents too, which I mentioned uh, in point one. So there really are lots of different ways that as a seller, you can help the restaurant and improve guest satisfaction. I've only mentioned a few of them here, but the idea here is to focus on that. Focus on how you can help the restaurant improve the satisfaction for their guests. That should be the basis upon which you're trying to get them to carry your products. So I'm just giving you the three things that every restaurant wants. Grow revenue, control costs, and improve guest satisfaction. Uh, I haven't talked about product knowledge. I haven't talked about persuasion skills. I haven't talked about how to present better, how to overcome objections, how to improve your closing skills. See, the key to selling more of anything is bringing value to the business relationship. If you do that consistently, you're going to sell everything that you want. So I hope this has been beneficial to you. If you got any value out of this, uh, please feel free to share this video. I would love it if you give it a thumbs up down below. That would be awesome. And by all means, contribute to this conversation by leaving some comments below. That would be great to hear from you because maybe you have ideas I haven't mentioned and that would benefit a lot of people. So thank you so much for watching. Talk to you soon.